Thank you, Sharan, for a nice introduction. Uh, I hope I'm audible and everybody can see the screen. Yes, you can. We are able okay. to. Uh, so, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining this webinar and uh, showing some interest in knowing about uh, butterflies of Delhi. Uh, in Delhi, uh, my today my presentation basically is going to be about uh, the species that are found in Delhi, butterfly species, uh, some areas of uh, Haryana and UP also. Uh, plus, I'm going to cover some uh, bits about the work that is going on around uh, butterflies in Delhi and CR. Okay, so without wasting any further time, let me start out. Uh, as you guys know, Delhi is our capital city and uh, it is bordered by UP and Haryana on two sides. Uh, quite populous, the metropolitan population is 16.3 million and uh, it has extreme weather climate in the sense that the uh, summers get too hot and winters get really cold also. So, uh, in this sort of uh, environment, finding butterflies and looking for butterflies is a challenge. Uh, but with a strong community, we've been able to do quite a bit of work on it. Uh, as far as Haryana goes, I'm going to cover a few places of Haryana. Uh, Haryana is uh, one of the northern Indian states. It has Delhi on three sides of it. And uh, the Yamuna River goes through it. Uh, it has very, it's a unique state in that sense that it has a very low uh, forest cover and it's a traditionally um, agricultural state. The area that I'm not going to cover is the foothills of uh, Himalayas, Shivalik range actually, which covers the northern bit of Haryana and that sense a totally different uh, habitat which is not similar to Delhi otherwise the habitat is quite similar to Delhi and uh, the only thing different in Delhi is the uh, level of urbanization that we are dealing with so this is the map of Delhi NCR Delhi NCR is like a administrative unit where uh, in encompasses the state of Delhi as well as uh, uh, quite a few states in Haryana, like uh, districts in Haryana. This is the green bits are the districts in Haryana. The blue ones are Rajasthan and the bright blue ones are uh, UP. So it covers quite a few distance, about 200 kilometers in all direction from uh, the borders of uh, Delhi. Uh, when we talk about Delhi and the ecological landscape present here, it is basically a northern plain city which uh, lies on the juncture of uh, meeting of Yamuna floodplains as well as uh, the oldest mountain range in the world, the Aravallis. Uh, in fact, as you can see on the slide, the last hill of Aravallis is the Rashtrati, Rashtrapati Bhavan where our seat of our government is. So it's quite a... Uh, important geological uh, formation as well as uh, culturally very important to us. We have been mining Aravlis for centuries and most of our famous North Indian famous uh, uh, forts and um, stuff are from the rock comes from here. So Delhi lies in the juncture of this and uh, uh, therefore we get two sorts of areas. One is the we call ridge, which means the Aravali, the other is the flood plains. <clears throat> you can see here is this is the forest cover map of Delhi. Most of it is an urban sprawl. There are a few patches of very dense forest. Uh, one of them is Asola Bharti Wildlife Sanctuary, where I work. It's Delhi's only sanctuary, which is in the southern part of Delhi. And there are these isolated forest pockets in the central bit and north, west and east. The forest cover is 20% uh, 
Uh, these are government numbers, Delhi Department of Forest and FSI report. And uh, every year they show an increase of uh, green cover. As you can see, the green cover has increased from 2015 to 2017 by 0.37% and from 2013 to 15 by 0.14%. And so small increases, but uh, <clears throat> we are, uh, I would say I'm lucky to live in a, a urban city like Delhi because uh, it's a rich biodiverse place. We have a lot of uh, uh, gardens, medium, small, big, gardens in our city, numbering more than 20,000. We have uh, something what we call city forests, which are numbering 45. These are big and small forest areas, not manicured. Uh, we have five very big uh, ridge areas uh, constituting the Aravalis. Uh, these are some of the forest areas around Delhi, as I already mentioned, the Solavati Wildlife Sanctuary. We also have a wetland called uh, Okhla Bird Sanctuary. Uh, there's a sacred forest, which is Mangarbani. Then there's a national park, uh, Sultanpur National Park. Then uh, city forests like Gonsi, Surajpur Wetland and Sareska National Park is also not too far off. So this contributes to all the diversity that we find in Delhi NCR area. Uh, over 400 birds have been recorded in Delhi. So it makes Delhi the second most uh, biodiverse, in terms of birds, second most biodiverse capital in the world after Nairobi. Uh, there's a rich culture of bird watching. Uh, more than 45 birds of prey have been recorded and 12 owl species. 102 species of butterflies are found here. And uh, that's going to be our focus for today. Uh, but from apart from that, even 51 species of uh, Odonata, 28 mammal species, 8 reptile species and 20 amphibian species. So as you can see, there are leopards in Delhi, there are hyenas in Delhi. Uh, I don't know how many of you would know this lizard shown here, this gecko shown here. This is, a, this is what we call a Aravli hill gecko or a Delhi rock gecko. This species of gecko is uh, not much is known about it. Uh, studies are still going on, but this is endemic to Delhi area, not being recorded from anywhere else. So I put this in my slide to emphasize that a city like Delhi could also have something endemic, which is surprising. Usually uh, the word endemic is associated with Western Ghats or uh, the states in Northeast of India or the um, uh, wetlands of Sundarban, but uh, Delhi is also fortunate enough to have a uh, endemic uh, lizard, uh, gecko species. Moving on to the butterflies of Delhi, as I've already mentioned, uh, there are about 102 species of butterflies in Delhi, uh, which is about 10% of what you can see all over India. Uh, out of the six butterfly families, we only have five. The metal mark family is not present in Delhi. So, the butterflies, moving on to the butterflies, uh, Hesperidae, not many species are uh, found in Delhi and there's a lot of uh, confusion over the, ex the exact species identification of the, most of these, you know, uh, uh, species. But the common ones are the Indian palm bob because of uh, palm being planted all over. Uh, plus, this common banded owl is also a very common one because uh, uh, departments in Delhi like plant planting karanj, which is the host plant for it. Uh, basically cows don't eat it, so it makes a good tree to plant and uh, avenues, and that helps the population of this common banded owl. Uh, in terms of swallowtails, we have only a few, common jay, common mormon, the lime, uh, a few of the common ones that you can see around Delhi. Most of Delhi's butterfly gardeners or uh, home gardeners are in love with the Mormon because it's very, very common. Everybody has a kari patta or it's very, very easy to obtain. So this is, uh, I would say this is a butterfly which is actually uh, 
uh, drawn a lot of people into the world of butterflies, seeing the life cycle happening so close, seeing the life cycle of this butterfly happening so close to your home changes your perception. So this has been a nice uh, butterfly friendly, uh, uh, gardener friendly butterfly in Delhi. Uh, <clears throat> whites and yellows, there are quite a few whites and yellows in Delhi. The typical uh, Aravali dry region uh, butterflies like uh, Salmon Arab and uh, Orange Tips and Pioneers uh, are found in very good numbers. Uh, actually, in the month of April and May, big swarms of uh, Pioneers come up and it's a very, very beautiful sight in Delhi. Uh, they're basically capers, Karil, uh, Caparis decidua. These are few host plants and they are found abundantly in Delhi Ridge area, which is the Aravali area. Uh, a lot of blues are found here, period first time in March and May and then in the winters. And uh, uh, most of the butterflies, the blues that we see are uh, the Aravli blues. There are not that many uh, butterflies. All right. So, uh, brush footed is another big family found here. The uh, In terms of pansies, we have uh, the corded grey pansy also. Uh, the chocolate pansy is rare. But apart from that, all the pansies are seen here. Uh, common castor is a very common... Uh, butterfly seen here, uh, as well as tonic coster. Tonic coster is, is uh, usually seen in uh, less disturbed areas, like um, uh, by disturbed I mean by human population. But wherever you would see uh, cows grazing, you will find tonic coasters. Uh, moving on from the butterflies found here, uh, let me so uh, let me talk about a little bit about. Uh, the studies that have been done in Delhi on butterflies. What I feel is very unfortunate uh, with studies in Delhi is that uh, Delhi is not a very glamorous place in terms of studying ecology. So we haven't had so many studies being done here. Uh, everybody who's interested in butterflies, like me also, wants to go to the Northeast or the Western Ghats to do their studies. So that way our urban cities are being neglected and uh, some of the few um, uh, studies that have happened is the earliest is by uh, uh, Larson, uh, Dr. Larson B. Dorman. He uh, traveled extensively since he was a child. He traveled extensively in the Middle East and the Indian subcontinent and he uh, incidentally he was last uh, the first time he was in uh, uh, Delhi, uh, he was, I think, 11 years old and there was a, a locust had attacked at that time also, a big locust attack had happened. So basically, he uh, has collected uh, most of his records uh, in the 1980s and uh, published a paper on it in the 2000, 2002, uh, which is like a definite record of uh, old butterflies in Delhi which we refer to. After that, uh, Peter Sir has worked uh, with Kalpuriksh on coming out with a book on butterflies in Delhi, again 2000s. Then uh, Dr. Surya Prakash from JNU has also <clears throat> for decades worked on butterflies and uh, collated a definitive 101 butterfly list of Delhi. Uh, apart from this, we at my, my team have been working since 2016 on the seasonality of butterflies in Asola Bharti Wildlife Sanctuary. So we are studying uh, for the past four years uh, which butterflies are seen in which season and trying to uh, establish a trend. Uh, moving on to the rare findings in Delhi, this is the common grass dart, which was a very new addition to the 101 list. Uh, this is the 102nd butterfly, so that's why now we have 102 butterflies on our list. This was found by uh, Shantanu in Asola Bharti Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, and he's also written a paper about it. Uh, other ones have been a uh, tropical flittery, which was seen in August 2018. 
uh, and again things in delhi uh, because of the lockdown we have seen we have been lucky enough to see a lot of uh, previously rare or uncommon butterflies so <clears throat> tropical flittery has also been recorded in the lockdown uh there are a few common line blues balkan pirer dark cerulean these have been recorded after a gap of 30 years and most of these uh, have been recorded from urban parks so there was a mention of these butterflies in uh, by larsen but <clears throat> over time mm, they kind of disappeared from delhi's landscape mm, they were not seen uh or recorded by anyone for a very very long time and uh, as you can see 2018 2019 we have had a few uh, recordings of so we can confirm that there are still some areas left in delhi which are uh, maybe like the uh, delhi larsen saw in 1980s <clears throat> uh, chocolate pansy i have discussed is a rare butterfly in uh, delhi is seen sporadically every 3 years or something like that and uh, only in the monsoon time when the moisture in delhi is at its highest a uh, common mime is again a butterfly which was recorded by my team in 2016 uh, but after that it wasn't recorded for 4 years and this lockdown there have been sambhav jain has recorded it in noida and there have also been one more record i one not confirmed but one more recording i think in central delhi as well uh common jezebel <clears throat> it was seen last in 2017 again in 2020 the lockdown it has been recorded in two areas one uh, in central delhi and the other in jnu jnu jawaharlal nehru university uh then there's dingy swift dingy swift uh, i i presume uh i presume must be a lot uh, in delhi and it's one of those overlooked butterflies because as i said that uh, i read species and species level identification of hesperidae is tough so these kind of get overlooked but uh, the first time we recorded uh, a dingy swift uh, and confirmed the identification was uh, uh in one of the butterfly months that we celebrate <clears throat> so what it got kind of attention on this new uh butterfly being seen and we positively recorded it as dingy swift then common goa blue is also a rare butterfly uh, which was recorded in 2017 as well as the striped albatross which was again recorded in 2017 last uh this is a very uh, unique Uh, example that i would like to talk about we <clears throat> have been studying uh, this red pirate in asola bharti for the last 3 years uh red pirate is an example of how butterflies adapt to their new areas and maybe how they are traveling uh, and changing habitats uh, this red pirate is missing from uh, larsen's uh, earlier studies in the 80s so this wasn't in the butterfly list of delhi's uh, delhi but uh, patthar chatta or kalincho being the host plant we think that it must have come somewhere from uh, pune or west bengal to the nursery network and uh, there's also a paper of it in 2000 seven or eight when it was trying to establish itself and then it disappeared again but now it has a uh, after 2012 it has established itself as a regular delhi butterfly this variant that you see you see these orange skid marks on the wing of the um, uh, red pirate butterfly in 2018 as the winter approached sarab said recorded the first such specimen in delhi and uh, after that we started doing a study on it and um, at one point of time more than 50% of uh, the red pirate variants 
the red pillars that you could see, they were fifty percent of them were variants, and uh, we still don't know why this is being caused. What is happening uh, to this butterfly that this is happening? But uh, through the network that we have made, uh, we also know of some records in Jammu and Kashmir of this variation, as well as uh, Chhattisgarh. where people have got in touch with us and getting to know about our study and told us that these are being seen everywhere else uh common baron i've included in a rare finding because it's not really rare but it has this very uh, it, it has a very good story attached to it a very um, uh, important story for us butterflies uh it is not cam common baron is not easily seen in delhi and though there are a lot of mango trees and lot of mulberry trees uh, not many recordings happen of it uh, this is right in front of my house and this tree is also like about 10 feet away from my house somebody was spraying the mangoes on this tree to get rid of uh, i think the pests that they imagine this mango tree has and while i was looking at that three barrens fell from the sky and from this tree and it made me realize i started uh, figuring out why we don't see so many uh, butterflies uh, so many common barrens so easily uh, and the correlation is these pesticides that people are using usually uh, uh, barren is very Uh, no mango trees are very prized and people have a personal uh, relationship with them and feel very uh, you know feel like owners of the tree and they take extreme care of the tree and in that extreme care i think uh, we are missing out on a lot of common barrens so there is a lot of scope here to educate people on not to use uh, chemical poisons and how it's affecting butterflies like common barrens uh moving on to Delhi Butterfly Month. Delhi Butterfly Month is our uh, is a program started by uh, BNHS in which uh, we are trying to give one month of September in creating programs, uh, curating programs, creating programs, and uh, uh, with the specific aim of uh, counting the butterflies species that you see in delhi in that month so we call that day a big butterfly uh, big butterfly count and hap happens every year we have through this uh, program uh, concluded programs for over 11000 people we our butterfly count in the first year 2017 Uh, covered 14 locations. After that, 51 locations, then 47 locations. Basically, we go all across Delhi, and uh, people take ownership or leadership of some areas. And in those areas, they count the species that they see, and we collate this list every year. In this, we are also creating uh, other champions that help us reach us. Uh, programs reach and do programs in schools colleges and various ngos working in uh, the underprivileged sector we in delhi butterfly month we've also used a massive media outreach uh, it has been a essential tool for us to reach uh, new people and for the same we have also every year published a public published a butterfly journal types where it's like a diary where there are photographs of butterfly and names of butterfly you can take what you see and submit to us apart from that we also use uh, online platforms on i naturalist uh, facebook butterflies of delhi ncr group uh, butterflies of india forum to uh, submit data what we submit the data that we have collected through citizen science monitor so you can see these are photographs of some of the groups that are happening uh these are some of the stories and radio interviews that we have done it uh, if anybody would like to start a campaign like this i would uh, suggest taking the help of media it's quite easy and uh, the media is looking for good and positive stories it plays into their need also so they will be quite helpful and will cover your 
uh, conservation movements also. Uh, the type of programs that we have done in this uh, Delhi Butterfly Month are Breakfast with Butterfly, Big Butterfly Cow. We even had Peter come down to do a team leader workshop, do in-depth training on identification of butterflies. We do butterfly gardening, we do photography, uh, we do origami, we do campus counts. Uh, you can see a lot of creative programs as well as uh, science-backed uh, conservation action that we want to give back to people. So the people learn about uh, butterflies, they learn how to identify them, they how to learn how to record the data as well as how to uh, change the habitats in their houses or in their parks or in their gardens to uh, help the butterfly population. This is really important. I wanted to keep it in here as uh, what I see the future of Butterfly Month to be. With Corona, uh, Butterfly Month could actually go to its purest form. When we imagined Butterfly Month, we did not think that we should be going to uh, uh, national parks or green areas. We wanted everybody to do backyard butterflying. But uh, uh, backyard butterflying, uh, people think that there are not that many butterflies in my backyard and hence ignore their backyards. But now we have an opportunity where we can start really investing time in our backyard because we know lockdown can come again anytime soon. Right? Uh, in as well as we want to push this uh, Delhi Butterfly Month to all other areas in India also. Uh, we would like to start collaborative initiatives with anybody who's interested and try and help them start something like this in their own city also. I don't see any reason why we should not be doing all of, we should not be doing uh, such programs all across India. Uh, we can also do uh, future studies on urban ecology, the migration of uh, some butterflies, the host plant relationship and how it is being affected by the spread of urban sprawl. So these are a few areas where uh, further studies could be undertaken. But mostly young kids. This is a way to reach young kids and uh, uh, the kids are the, the next generation. They are going to do uh, what we cannot or could not do. Or improve upon what we have spoiled is how I look at it. Uh, another interesting project that is coming out of the Delhi Butterfly Month is uh, a butterfly corridor. As you can see, this is the map of Delhi and there are a few green forests in this map. We are trying to create a green corridor which will go up the Yamuna and up the Aravali range to connect the forest in the south, that is the Sola Bhati, to forest in the north, that is the Yamuna Biodiversity Park. And we are doing this uh, uh, by identifying areas which have uh, urban clusters, which need uh, butterfly parks and gardens. We provide the plants, we provide the technical know-how, uh, and we try and reach schools and colleges, uh, colonies, our resident welfare associations, uh, also home gardens. So at this moment, we started this last year and we are at 31. Somebody asked me how many you build and uh, I think there's a scope to build 10,000 of them. So we could just keep going and filling up this area so as to not have isolated populations of butterflies and have a free you know, mingling of gene pool, which is very important for disease resilience. So it is something uh, uh, which has worked in a few cities. It, the biggest challenge in going out there and convincing people to make such habitats is uh, uh, changing their mindset about gardening itself. Apart from that, I think everybody wants a butterfly garden in their homes, in their, garden, in their parks, in their schools. So we have had a lot of support. But the um, challenge comes in, you know, their, what their idea of a butterfly park is and what a real ecological, uh, ecologically sense, you know, uh, it has to make ecological sense. So if your butterfly park uh, expectations don't match, then usually people back out. 
so it's more of uh, um, a education outreach program than just uh, a habitat formation program because once you uh, hand it over people uh, if they understand uh, butterfly and their habitats and their ecology they take it on their on themselves and go forward and educate others also we've seen that with all the groups that we have worked in we work with school kids we work with uh, uh, gardeners you know uh, government gardeners who are maintaining parks we work with people living in apartments we work with uh, private resort owners as well as uh, politicians you know trying to get everybody uh, uh, on the same page same sort of uh, ecological facts to everybody and hoping that uh, they can start making changes in their surroundings which might help the uh, butterfly it's a very simple you know st stop using chemicals plant host plants don't do uh, too much gardening like deweeding and cleaning and all that so very simple things which can go a long way <clears throat> as far as resources and butterflies for butterflies in delhi uh, of course there's my team then there's dr surya prakash who's worked in uh, aravli on aravli butterflies for the last decade then there's also shantanu who's been a very active member of the movement as well as uh, a few young kids who are coming up ayush sambhav san kanan these guys are interested in butterflies have taken over uh their areas are actively uh, creating butterfly habitats as well as recording and studying life cycles of butterflies which is very very important i feel and uh, it's heartening to see the younger generation take it up uh like i said do things that we can do and change the world for a better way so i gives me lots of hope when i see young kids taking this up and you know actually practicing what they have been taught uh in this whole program we also initiated a petition to make the state butterfly of delhi uh i'm sad to say we haven't been successful we have petitioned to the department of forest and wildlife and they are quite willing but we are stuck on the fact that we can't come to a consensus on which butterfly should be a state butterfly so the four nominations are blue pansy silver line salmon arrow and plain tiger but as is more with lots of people it takes time to decide which should go forward right so i am hoping to get this done by this year uh, if we can get a consensus and if things go back to normal uh, delhi should also have a state butterfly these are some of the publications that we have worked on every year this is 2017 18 19 that we give out to participants as well as anybody from across india who asks for uh, you know putting uh, down the butterflies that they see this is a good way to get uh, kids involved in actually maintaining a record of what butterflies they see on a daily basis so uh, a good tool that has come quite useful to us we've also had a book on butterflies of asola bharti wildlife sanctuary about 4 years ago uh some brochures with the support of department of forest and wildlife asola butterfly park is where it all started so we have made the largest butterfly park in north india it started out the very small area then it was increased to 3 acre size and now it is an 8 acre area uh, it says park spread over 8 8, 8 acres we have plant, planted 65 native plant varieties uh, 9000 host and nectar plants and we have recorded over 85 butterfly species there out of the 102 that are seen in delhi uh work on this butterfly park started in 2015 and uh, it was inaugurated in 2017 uh, before we started making it we went across india and checked out all the butterfly parks that were existing at that time took notes talked to people who had made it uh, 
try to figure out their challenges and what uh, things go right, when things go right, when things go wrong, trying to understand uh, how to go about it. But the biggest challenge was working with the government because in government, the things go really slow. <clears throat> but once the inauguration date was set and the minister was going to come and inaugurate it, then the work happened 24 hours a day. So we worked all through the summer of 2017 to get this park going. Uh, this is the Butterfly Interpretation Center. As you can see, 2017, uh, right before, this is like two, we <laughs> two weeks before the uh, inauguration was supposed to happen. So work happened at breakneck speed uh, for about three months and for about three and a half years. It, happened at a snail's speed. So you can see uh, uh, these transformation. We have used mostly, uh, it has been a community effort. We have used school students and uh, homeschoolers, uh, basically students to plant the whole place. And that has, uh, you know, given people a sense of ownership over it. And they feel very proud when they come back and see all the butterflies. It makes them feel connected to it and makes them feel that they could do more if just planting a few trees uh, could change the landscape of such a barren area. Then they could do it in their homes also and then they could do it in their uh, colonies in their neighborhoods. Which is the ex exact aim of the Butterfly Month. So Asola Butterfly Park is the hotspot in Delhi, if you want to check out butterflies. Apart from Asula Butterfly Park, as I said, there's a lot of uh, uh, gardens in Delhi. Sundar Nursery is one of them. It's an old garden where you see a lot of rare butterflies because it's a mix of uh, uh, urban garden as well as uh, forest unkept areas. So wherever there are such areas in Delhi, you will see a lot of butterflies. So Lodi Garden is one of them. Aravli Biodiversity Park, Gurgaon and Vasant Punja are the hotspots. Japani Park in Rohini, uh, Deer Park, Okla Bird Sanctuary. There are few, these are few of the hotspots that you find in Delhi. Uh, picture credit for this presentation is, uh, apart from me, the Shantanu, uh, Lakhan and Geeta who helped me out with this uh, PowerPoint and I'd like to thank them at this point. Uh, I would like to close my, if I have time, Sharan, do I have time for the video? Yeah, we have time, we can go. Okay, so uh, I would like to close my presentation today by asking you a question. Do you want to create a butterfly, habitat for butterflies? If so, you can get in touch with us. We, it's not just me, we are, uh, team of uh, like-minded people and very, very interested and helpful butterfly lovers. So if you, if anybody watching today in the seminar or even later, you know of somebody who wants to do something, uh, we would provide the plants, we would provide the technical know-how, uh, all sort of help that can be provided. Uh, we'll try and do that. And uh, I would also, at this point, urge the listeners to join the Delhi Butterfly Month from their own homes in their own cities and make it a truly pan-India movement. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, everybody should be celebrating Butterfly Month every month, every day of the year. And that's what uh, I think we should to be, we all should be aiming for. So here is my uh, email ID and phone number. You can note it down and get in touch with me if you have any questions, if you want any help. Uh, I'm always ready to help. Okay. Uh, there is a short movie that I would like to show you at this time. Can you see the screen? I'm able to see only your presentation. Maybe you can close the PPT and you can... So this is a movie on a program that we do. It's called Breakfast with Butterfly. Hi, I'm Sohail Madan from Bombay Naturalistic Society. Delhi Butterfly Month is our flagship program 
and the idea for this festival is for people to get to know about uh, butterflies and do a count on 22nd September in various locations across Delhi. This is not just a PR campaign for awareness around butterflies. It's not just about importance of butterflies. It's mostly a stealth program to increase the mental health of Delhi citizens. The more we go out in nature, the better it is for our health. So this is an opportunity I would like all of you to take and spend time in your own backyard. got to know about this program from one of our acquaintances and initially we were not sure about it but then after coming here it was a wonderful experience we got to know a lot about butterflies and honestly we came over here basically for the kids thinking the kids are going to have fun but uh, to add on to it we also had a good time and actually uh, we just forget that uh, when we grow we don't learn so many things uh, and we can actually learn them directly from the nature. Yeah, like, so, like such a small creature, the butterfly, but so many histories around it. It's wonderful. We collaborate with BNHS every year for the Butterfly Month as an educator. And the main goal, the main motive of this sort of an event is to spread awareness about the second most important pollinators in the world, which are butterflies. Knowing about butterflies is something that every person should think about. Why? Because butterflies are very, very important to the ecological health of a particular place. And we would also like all the schools and the colleges to collaborate with us on this initiative where we do, where we go to their campuses to work, uh, do butterfly counts with them. This day was the best because this place is surrounded by a lot of pollution and areas but this place is so green. We saw uh, orange tip, wagtail and many more. And some butterflies have cut legs, half legs. I love life about it that it was such a beautiful place and there were so many things that we did not know. We learned so many things here about butterfly and other insects. I was thinking not to go, but then when I came here, I saw all the wildlife and I thought, why did I not bring my camera? I recommend all of you people to come here. So I run an enrichment center for children where I do nature and heritage walks and basically it's an effort to introduce the children to their environment and I've been doing this for some time and it's amazing that there's such a beautiful butterfly park over here where you can bring the kids, you can show them the butterflies, their caterpillars, their eggs, everything happening naturally out in the wild. Nowadays, as we are getting more and more urban and we are living more and more in the cities and we are clearing more and more of these wild spaces, there are less of the host plants for the butterflies. We are going to lose our butterflies unless efforts like this are made in various colonies and bits of parks are left wild for these insects and the butterflies. So the insects are really, really important to us. If all mankind was wiped out from Earth, insects would be around. If all insects are wiped out from the Earth, no cure. So Sharon, yeah, this is uh, me and my Delhi butterflies. Uh, are there any questions?